Today, we're going to speak about personal branding, positioning, LinkedIn profile, and how to leverage LinkedIn with Leanne Calderwood, who is training people in the meetings and event industry. Enjoy this conversation with Leanne. Hello, and welcome to a new episode of the Business of Meeting podcast. And today, I have the great pleasure speaking with uh, one of our neighbors to the north that are the nicest people on earth and that uh, has a lot of experience in venue selection, in meeting planning. And today, she is an expert in helping people with their personal branding and LinkedIn profile. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Leanne Calderwood, how are you? Hey, Eric, it's so great to talk to you. How are you? Very well. I got to talk to you. So it's wonderful. <laughs> and uh, I know you have a lot of concrete items to share, uh, which is always what I'm looking for, because I love when people listen and say, ah, that's something that I can do, or that's something that I, I can implement. But before we get there, uh, I'd like to know what is Leanne's story and how did you get into our industry? Yes. Well, thanks for asking. I think like everyone else of maybe our age, Eric, we, we kind of fell into the industry and that's definitely what happened to me 22 years ago, I guess. I came out of university with a, a phys ed degree and started at the local YMCA thinking that I would do sports training but it was teaching leadership conferences and delivering leadership conferences that really uh, changed the course of my career. And I started my meeting planning career from there. Uh, and then about 15 years ago, I fell in love with contracts, which not a lot of people do. I was thinking I like, who, who's yeah. falling in love with, are you a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I fell in love with the, uh, the hotel contracts and more, more importantly, the relationship between the planner and the venues and partners that they were working with. Uh, so I've been in site selection for 15 years doing just that, cultivating relationships with both planners and site selection. And then of course, when March, 2020 hit, I decided to take all of the knowledge that I had built growing my business using LinkedIn and using my personal brand and create something that could help others do the exact same thing. So that's what I do now. I'm still doing some site selection on the side, but predominantly I'm here to help others build their businesses, be it group sales or site selection, using tactics uh, with your personal brand and of course using the LinkedIn platform. That's awesome. Now you make it sound so easy and smooth. Uh, yeah, March 2020 came and I decided, well, uh, if we can go back for a moment at that time, uh, where you have 15 years of experience and you see what was going on in the industry. And, and as I was saying with you uh, before we start recording this, I've heard too many times the word pivoting. I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> but in your case, you did actually pivot. You, you did actually uh, think about what else can you be doing. But can you take us back at that moment? What's going on in your mind? And what are any any tools or... or uh, tricks that uh, you use so that it can also inspire somebody who might be looking at maybe not a crisis, but making a change in their professional life? Yeah, uh, it's such a fascinating question. And I think when that day rolled around, and for us here in Canada, it was March 13th, it was a Friday. And I think collectively, the Canadian event community just had this wave of nausea. And we just all fell into the holy crap, what has just happened? And instantly, you know, the, the industry evaporated. And so I had that moment of panic and I guess that moment of, of grief, but it was instantly, almost instantly replaced with that moment of opportunity. This was the one time in my life when maybe I wasn't running 24 seven or for a lot of meeting planners running 32 seven, right? <laughs> Trying to get it all done. And we could all take that collective breath. And so that's when I decided what to do with my breath. And I thought, this is the one opportunity I have to explore this file that's been sitting on the corner of my desk. I have a passion for LinkedIn. I've, I've had a brand I feel for, for so many years and it served me so well. I knew there was something about what it was I was doing. I still had a lot, a lot to learn, but I also had a lot to offer. And it was just the one opportunity because we never knew when our industry was going to come back, Eric. Remember back yep. in March 2020, we all said this was going to be done by June. 
So at that time, I really only had two months to get this thing going. Of course, as we know now, it was two years. And so I just felt this, if I'm ever going to do this in my lifetime, it's going to be now. And Mm -hmm. so I didn't waste any time. I picked up that file, started diving in, started learning as much as I could about the things I didn't know. Still doing that today, Eric, every day I'm learning something new. But now I'm able to give that to other people. And I suppose it was my way to kind of give back during a time when we all needed somebody or something or some thing to hang on to. And so I started creating content on LinkedIn every single day for our community. Started doing things like this, Eric, and talking to people through podcasts and LinkedIn live shows because we were just all so disconnected at that time. And now, two years later, I feel I've learned more in the past two years than I ever did in my 20 years prior. And um, you can't replace that. You cannot replace that for sure. So does that answer your question? It does. And, and I, I actually have two points that came to mind when I was listening to you. The first one is you didn't let yourself be uh, paralyzed, but you said, okay, this is the situation. I don't know how long it's going to take, but now is the time to to react. And the second thing, you mentioned a file. So tell us about that file. And what was that exactly uh, that you can just dive in it and and start something new in two weeks? Yeah, well, it's it's interesting. So it can be looked at as a virtual file, but in my case, it actually was a file. And every time I had some success on the LinkedIn platform, be it a post that did really well, or someone would send me a message, I'd actually save it as a, in my file as part of like, okay, what's working, what's not working. And so my informal way of testing new theories in branding or testing new theories on LinkedIn, I kept in a file. Now I'm testing every single day as opposed to just collecting things that I would, you know, see on the fly. So, so it was a file. It was what, what things am I doing on LinkedIn that are actually working? What things aren't working as well? And what I did with that file is I created a digital course. So about six months after COVID hit, so it was the fall of 2020, I launched my first digital course that taught people how to use LinkedIn taught people how to optimize their LinkedIn profile, how to grow their networks, and how to start creating content on a platform that, to be honest, can be sometimes intimidating for people. Mm. So that was my first product was the LinkedIn course. Now, fast forward, I have another course on top of that, as well as a bunch of one-on-one and group training modules that are out there for depending on how people like to learn, um, there's different options for them to start their LinkedIn journey. That's awesome. Uh, a friend of mine, Susan Fold Collins, is an amazing coach, and, and she wrote uh, the book called uh, Technology of Success. And one of the things she's mentioning is to have a success file, whether uh, it's an yeah. Evernote or, or, or a, uh, a physical, uh, but basically to have a success file so that the days uh, that are not as good as others, you might look at it and say, well, you know what? I'm worth it, and this is what I've done. And in your case, there is a little bit of that, But it's also another element of, oh, this is something that I like, and maybe one day I'll I'll do something with it. Yeah, you know, and it's it's that whole practice what you preach thing, that whole success file. It's it's actually part of the course, ironically, because people who can take the time to elevate you and and give you props and support you in what you're doing. If people have taken the time to do that, we need to acknowledge that and mm. respect that because we are get so busy, we so rarely take the time to do that. So that success file, there's power in that. It means that people have actually taken time out of their day to lift you up and so to respect that. But I need to do it more better myself, um, Eric. There are days when you know, things are not going my way or in my business, and I need to lean on that uh, success file a little bit more. So thank you, Susan, for that reminder. I'm going to do that. <laughs> you know, I, I'm comparing with Facebook. So Facebook, oh. obviously, the amount of people that you've been able to convince to change their opinion on Facebook is equal to zero or close <laughs> to it. 
uh, actually might be negative because you might be uh, uh, annoying some other people. Unless instead of thinking for hours about the post that you're going to do, you post a picture of a cat or a dog. Now, LinkedIn is totally different. So wh what, what do you recommend people do with the LinkedIn profile uh, or start posting? Yeah, well, you're right. There's, there's three activities on LinkedIn that are a little bit different from Facebook. Number one is LinkedIn. You really have a robust personal profile. When LinkedIn started, it was known as the online resume. But now our personal profiles are really a representation of our personal brands. Facebook, we don't have quite that opportunity right from the get-go. You know, people look at our Facebook profiles and it's more about the content than it is about our brand's representation. So optimizing our brand's representation on LinkedIn is probably step one for a lot of people. And then step two is growing the networks so that people can actually then look at the personal brand representation we've created. And then, of course, step three is creating content that goes a little bit beyond that cat picture and more about the, the things that we find ourselves being thought leaders about. And LinkedIn uses that word a lot, thought leader. And I think that is the prominent difference between LinkedIn and Facebook is Facebook is very much about personal experiences and personal journeys, our families, our trips, our vacations, et cetera. But our subject matter expert and our thought leadership, that's what really shines on the LinkedIn platform. And all of us are thought leaders. And perhaps prior to LinkedIn, we've never been really given a platform to do it. Maybe a little bit on Twitter. You know, we see mm -hmm. a lot of professional content on Twitter. But the things that we know well on a professional level or, or we're subject matter experts in, LinkedIn has given us the opportunity to share that with others. And I feel it's a disservice when we keep those gifts to ourselves. And now LinkedIn's given us a, a place to share our gifts with others. That's a very good point. Um, I also have seen uh, many people commenting, uh, don't transform LinkedIn into Facebook. So yes. you're talking about Facebook. I hate political correctness. Those who knows me know that. I am not shy speaking against, uh, not against, but about topics that are dear to my heart. Uh, I, I don't mind doing that on Facebook at all. And my point is, this is who I am. You know, take it, leave it. It's the same. Uh, I'm not asking your, your opinion. I'm sharing with mine and we can debate. But I never post anything Absolutely not even once. I never post anything political. I never post anything uh, about uh, geopolitics, uh, mm -hmm. about whatever topics it can be on LinkedIn, except professional topics. Well, and what we were seeing on LinkedIn, you're right, Eric, is this clash of personal and professional worlds on LinkedIn. The problem, or rather the reality is outside of LinkedIn, that's happening right? Our personal and professional worlds collide in real life. And ironically, especially during COVID, when a lot of us found ourselves working from home for the first times in our lives, that personal and professional world was colliding every mm -hmm. minute of every single day. Now with LinkedIn, you're right. I hope it remains the professional platform that it was built on, you know, over or almost 20 years ago. But you are seeing more personal content leak into the platform. The personal content that I see that works well on LinkedIn is not the political posts, but rather the, the storytelling that has a professional learning. And, I, and I'll give just an example, I guess, for my LinkedIn storytelling. I did a post recently about my son's graduation. Beautiful. Now on Facebook, Beautiful Facebook book. post, thank you, but, but, I'll, but let's, let's break it down. Let's break down why it was beautiful. On Facebook, it was, hey, Sam graduated from grade 12. Woohoo, here's some balloons, yada, yada, yada. But on LinkedIn, it was about Sam's journey to graduate high school. And the intent of that was, if you are struggling to get to that next step, or if you are, you know, on the the cusp of, of achieving your goals and dreams and overcoming obstacles, know that you're not alone. There's other people out there who are going through the exact same thing. 
And that is why that did well on LinkedIn is because in a world of professionals who need those encouraging stories, I, you never know who you're hitting on a certain day that needs to hear that bit of inspiration or that bit of an encouragement. And Eric, I cannot tell you how many people have messaged me to tell me stories of their children who have learning disabilities or, yep. or them, they themselves had a learning disability. So the storytelling on LinkedIn, it just looks different from Facebook and it doesn't make one better than the other. It's just, you're going to pull something different from the message. I'm, I'm comparing it to what type of discussion will you have in a professional setting? Mm-hmm. So to your, to your point, what you share about the journey of your son, besides the fact that it was beautiful and inspiring, it is also about you. And everybody's talking about being authentic, uh, you know, be yeah. yourself. That to me is what you post on LinkedIn specifically about the journey of your son. That is the type of discussion that you might have in a professional setting before the meeting or at dinner, totally acceptable. Mm-hmm. And more than that, more than acceptable, I would say, totally. Uh, into who you are and, and, mm-hmm. and sharing the authenticity of who you are. Not the political, not the religion, not that type of uh, topics, right? Right. And you, you know what, Eric, you're going to find those topics on LinkedIn. I'm like you. I'm of the mindset that those topics do not, shouldn't have a place on LinkedIn, those political and divisive conversations. I'm still very much about LinkedIn being a community that brings people together and not pulls them apart. But you see those divisive conversations on LinkedIn. And, you know, the best recommendation I have for that is, you know, grow your networks and followings to find more positive influences. Then your home feed will be filled with those positive messages and those messages of inspiration and encouragement. And soon those divisive conversations will kind of trickle its way out of your home feed and you'll be filled with positive encouragement as you start your work day. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit about uh, growing your network. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you start your profile or you, you maybe had a profile for several years, not be very active with it. Yeah. Um, how to avoid the, oh, hello, uh, I'm Leanne. I would like to connect with you. I accept the invitation. <laughs> the next thing I know is like, I have five pages of what you do and what you sell and what I, yeah. How do you avoid that so that you really build uh, a relationship and grow your network through LinkedIn? Yeah. Well, thank you for using that word. LinkedIn is the relationship platform. Even though it's professional, it's still a relationship social platform. And when you're building your network, it is a one on one transaction. So LinkedIn used to have the feature when you connected with someone, it used to send an automatic message to the contact saying, hi, I'd like to add you to my LinkedIn network. Ironically, that template has disappeared. And now we're just left with, you know, this person, click yes or no. You can still personalize the message though. And so Eric, if I'm connecting with you, it's no, hi, Eric, I'd like to add you to my LinkedIn network. It is. Hey, Eric, I heard your podcast the other day, and I really loved what you said about Facebook being that divisive place. I'm of the belief that dot, 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 since we're like-minded people, should we connect here on LinkedIn? And so sending a personalized message really goes a long way because it shows your new connection that you've taken the time to learn a little bit about them. You've found some things professionally, perhaps in common. And you have an interest in watching their LinkedIn journey as well. It is elbow grease, Eric, but your invitation with that personalized message has a 75% chance of being accepted more than just that blank invitation. Mm -hmm. And you've probably received them as well. You've received those invitations without that message and gone, how do I know this person? Why would I even want to connect with them? And maybe you've even ignored that invitation. But it's hard to ignore an invitation where the person has taken the time to find that common ground. And now you feel like this is a great person for my network. Let's invite them in. Absolutely. You know what I hate the most is the person who's connecting. And even if we have something in common, they connecting as I accept the invitation. Good. Two days later, I'm receiving a sales pitch. Yep. (laughs) 
<laughs> it, it's like I don't know you or I just know where you work and I'm just opening yeah. the door of your office and said, hey, I, do you want to buy from me? Yeah. And then not only that, but they're very persistent. And the message of, I don't know if you've seen the message I sent you. I, I haven't got uh, an answer yet. And then it even elevate in those two. Why am I not getting a, a message? I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. is something I just go back to the profile, disconnect with that person. What are your recommendations uh, in terms of really bi- not only building the network and connecting, but maintaining that network? Over yes. Time? Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you my number one golden nugget. But going back to that immediate pitch, it's funny because I did a post just last week, ironically, about this very practice. LinkedIn aficionados lovingly call it pitch slapping. So you've been pitch slapped, Eric. Someone has pitch slapped you. Ouch. And yeah, exactly. It hurts. And the analogy I like to use is a little bit like when we first started dating someone or even just met someone. You know, I extended you a LinkedIn invitation, which means I'm shaking your hand virtually. But I better not be pulling out an engagement ring the very next day. Like we need to warm up to one another. You know, I shook your hand. Now maybe it's time that you know, we go for coffee and I check out your LinkedIn content or, and this is the golden nugget. I start to comment on your LinkedIn content. Logistically, when you comment on someone's piece of content, the receiver gets a notification that you have commented and now you're on their radar. Mm. So that's when you've shake, shake hands with someone, you know, for my, for me, I've shook hands with this good looking guy. And then the next week we're at this group function and we're at this football game together, but he catches my eye by leaving a comment. Mm. That's kind of what that does on LinkedIn. And so now I'm starting to pay attention to him a little bit more. You know, he seems really smart. He seems to have some really great thought leadership. He's leaving these very insightful comments on my content. Now, maybe I get to want to get to know him a little better. Maybe we do want to exchange a couple of direct messages about the things we have in common. And so then we start to go down that road. And then, and only then, Eric, do I have your permission to say, hey, by the way, this is what I do. And it seems through my conversations, we might be a good fit to find something we can collaborate on. What do you say? Do you want to jump on a 10 minute call? But to ask to buy something right after you connect, I mean, it's you you wouldn't do that in real life. So let's not do it on the platform. Absolutely. But what type of information do do you send, if any, to a new connection to remain top of mind with them besides um, commenting on their post? Are you you sending art? I don't know. You realize that somebody is passionate about baseball Uh, and you see an article uh, which is talking about the history of baseball Mm -hmm. so do do you have like a list of people that you want to maintain relationship with and and go deeper into what is it that they like and what is they post about I actually do and and but it's taken me a lot of years to get to that point Eric where I am now intentionally engaging with people that I think would be a good fit for either collaboration or a good fit for business opportunities. But it is still that back and forth of commenting on their content. To your point, maybe sending them a direct message with an article that you read that they might find interest in and nurturing that relationship. So I, you know, and you mentioned it before that I'm from Canada and we're very polite here in Canada and we always wait for the first, the other person to take the first step. Goodness gracious, because we're not that outgoing. Um, I don't know what is that all about. (laughs) That's what we do. There's the guy with no accent, of course. I'm sorry. I I don't have an accent, of course. Right. (laughs) Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it's all good. People think I'm from Minnesota and it's like, no, I'm from Canada, but thank you. That must be my accent. (laughs) Anyways, yeah, just nurturing that relationship, whether it's through the commenting strategy I mentioned or through a very respectful direct messaging strategy, providing more value than you're taking. And so that's the key, I think, with our LinkedIn journeys is 
through our content, through our comments, and through our direct messages, we need to be feeding into people versus trying to take, 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 and sell, sell, sell. Totally agree. Absolutely. Now, Leanne, you're also working and and helping people on their personal branding, and obviously Mm -hmm. LinkedIn is part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to to speak a little bit about that, about differentiation, about, you know, Mm -hmm. positioning. Just taking your LinkedIn profile as an example, um, I went on it before uh, we start our conversation. You speaking at MPIWEC, it's on the profile. Uh, and then you look at your picture and suddenly you have a, a video uh, where you talking. So c- can you maybe just speak about that little uh, tactic if you want, and then uh, elaborate more on to the, the general positioning for someone personal branding? Yes. Well, and if we're talking specifically about LinkedIn and what you've done, Eric, is you've taken a look at my headline, um, which talks about me going to WEC. And you've taken a look at my cover story, which is that little video you saw kind of flicker in and out of my profile picture. With your LinkedIn profile, being consistent from element to element to element helps cement your personal brand. So if you're talking about one subject in your cover video, but then your headline talks about something completely different, there's a disconnect and people are not going to associate anything with your personal brand. But having a cohesive and consistent story from all of your elements, people start to get a sense of who it is you are, what it is that you do, how you help somebody, and those differentiating factors that you have within your industry. And, you know, Eric, you and I are in an industry where Meeting planners, there's thousands and thousands of meeting planners, but each meeting planner has a very, very unique offering. And if you can find that thing that you do oh so well, maybe even better than any other meeting planner, or the way that you connect with people is so unique and you capitalize on that, you've got a super powerful personal brand because people start to recognize that little thing with Mm -hmm. you and you alone. So it's finding that tiny, tiny little thing. And and then that's the thing. It doesn't have to be sweeping thing. You do not need to be the best meeting planner in the world to have a personal brand. You need to be a meeting planner that excels in this or a meeting planner who does really well in that or a meeting planner who specializes in this. And now you have something extremely powerful and something that people will remember and differentiate you by when you're in a sea of other people. Absolutely. Does that help? Yeah, definitely. And yeah. made me think of uh, this book that I read years ago that I still recommend, especially with people I'm coaching. That's one of uh, my favorite book uh, in terms of marketing and it, in terms of positioning. It's uh, Al Reese and Jack Trout, Positioning the Battle for Your Mind. Yes. So you have so many as you say, meeting planners, Mm -hmm. how do you differentiate yourself? And what is your recommendation for somebody who first becomes aware of the fact that they need to find this little something that you were mentioning, but how do they do about it? And how could they really and truly differentiate themselves? Well, um, so let's use me as an example, just very, very quickly. And then we'll get back to that meeting planner. So now a days, I liken myself to be a LinkedIn trainer and expert. Friends, there's literally thousands of LinkedIn trainers and experts out there. So differentiating myself as being that person, I specifically do LinkedIn training and uh, for the hospitality meetings and events industry. So if you're a doctor looking for LinkedIn training, I'm not your person. If you're a lawyer, still not your person. But if you're a hotel sales manager, I want to be top of mind when it comes time for you to find some LinkedIn training. So that's how I've created that differentiating factor in my own line of business is I work with a very small and niche community of people. Mm -hmm. I know this niche inside out and backwards. I've been here for 20 years. The customer you're trying to attract is me. So Mm -hmm. let me teach you how to attract me. And meeting planners can do the same thing. You are not a meeting planner for all kinds of business. Perhaps you're only a meeting planner 
for those that are doing corporate events at large destinations that focus on law, or perhaps you're a meeting planner that only focuses on DEI training. There's a thousand different things that you can find your niche and specialty on. There's a lot of meeting planners who have a lot of great experience with AV or great experience with running trade shows. That's your differentiating factor. That's what's going to set you apart from the mom and pop shop who has never run a trade show in their lives. Mm -hmm. So those are types of things that can differentiate you. And they say that the riches are in the niches. And I really firmly believe that if you can communicate that tiny little thing that you do better than anyone else in the industry, you will attract and grow your business with the right kinds of clients. I firmly, firmly believe that. So I, I hope that resonates and helps the planners out there but also helps those who work in hotels and destinations. Find what is unique about you and find out what's unique about the product that you represent. And that will set you apart from everyone else in your comp set. I love what you're saying there. It's uh, so important to remember that. Yes, the, the riches are in the niches. And the problem is that we all, a lot of people always want to be everything for everyone. And it mm-hmm. never works. Mm -hmm. Uh, because then you cannot be top of uh, of mind for for, uh, anything. You were talking about uh, growing the network, your personal branding. Um, How many people do you know? Well, actually, for me, you're the only one uh, who is facilitating a community on Clubhouse with 15,000 people. Ah, Clubhouse. Oh, my gosh. I love Clubhouse. You know, Clubhouse had, I guess, the peak of its its, uh, popularity About a year ago, actually, Eric, it was probably between January and the summer of 2021 when Clubhouse really blew up. Here's what I love about Clubhouse is the diversity of voices that you can find on that platform and invite into community. It can be a time suck, I'm not going to lie, and my time on Clubhouse now is down to one hour a week. I run a room on Friday with a branding expert out of Australia. Talk about a clash of worlds. Like this person should never be in my world. He's from Australia. Yes, he does branding, but we should never have met. And now a year later, he's one of my best friends. And I spend an hour with him every week talking about branding, talking about inbound marketing and social selling, which in its essence is LinkedIn. So it's a fascinating conversation we have every week. I firmly believe there's a place for social audio, especially as we grow our brands. And now that LinkedIn has LinkedIn audio, you're going to see it more and more and more. In fact, Eric, and I've told a few people this, so now you know, when I get access to LinkedIn audio, we're going to start having conversations for our industry through my LinkedIn audio channel. So watch for the invite for that, Eric, because I think that's where people can come together from around the world informally. You know, we don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get on a plane to go to these conferences. We come together in these social audio rooms and we hash out solutions for some of the problems our industry is having. Yeah, and as usual, it has its role. It's great. Never going to replace face-to-face and and, uh, the serendipity of conversation. Because, you know, I, I can, let, let's take the, uh, the example you were mentioning earlier on. I can listen to your LinkedIn training at uh, MPIWEC uh, if it's uh, live streamed. But mm-hmm. I never got to get the chance to interact as much with, not only with you, with the people in the room, uh, hearing what they say, getting tips, connecting with people. That is something that, that can only happen face to face. Uh, now, go, going back to what you just said, so you, you have LinkedIn audio, you have all those different tools. Which one do you pick? Or which two, first two, or top three, I don't know. Which one do you pick to focus on and to build your brand? Ooh, uh, well, it probably isn't audio. I would say video. So whether you do video through live video, whether it's LinkedIn Live or some other kind of thing, or you're including some video in your content, video is a great way to build connections with people that you're not sitting across the table from. You know, case in point, I think we've been able to uh, keep and in most cases grow relationships the past couple of years because of Zoom. 
Yeah. It's that eye to eye contact and, and video is a great way to create trust with your audience. So yeah, my money's on video. I am not the best person at video. I'll be the first to say that. But if you have the bandwidth to create some video, you will grow your brand faster. So video is one. Uh, mm -hmm. With all the, the platform, and, and I know obviously uh, you have a bias for LinkedIn, which I, I do, <laughs> I share as well. But what are the platform or how many platform can you really focus on when you are a small business owner? What, what is your recommendation there? Yeah, no, my advice is to start with one platform at a time. And as you become consistent on that platform, doesn't mean you're posting every day. It means you just are consistent in your posting schedule. Then add another platform. And one of the platforms, and, and it's scaring the heck out of me, Eric, but one of the platforms that's really coming on for hospitality right now is TikTok. Yes. So, you know, maybe TikTok is where you want to start your personal brand. And as you get consistent on TikTok, then add another platform. Of course, I'm going to say LinkedIn, but there's a place for hospitality in all of the platforms, really. Absolutely. Leanne, I, I can listen to you for hours. Now, obviously, the, this podcast is limited in time uh, for obvious reasons. But um, when are we going to be meeting in one year, face mm -hmm. to face, or the mm -hmm. next time we meet, hopefully before, with a bottle of champagne, mm -hmm. what are we going to be celebrating? Well, Eric, boldly, I would like to say we're celebrating the fact that I am the go-to expert for LinkedIn for the meetings and events industry. So whatever that looks like, you know, be it a business that's growing and continually helping hospitality professionals with their LinkedIn presence or speaking at marquee events about LinkedIn, that's where I'm, I'm staking my claim, Eric, and that's where I'd love to be a year from now. And you're a wonderful salesperson as well. So congratulations yeah. <laughs> on that. Oh, thank you. Thank Leanne, my, my last question before we, mm -hmm. uh, we, we part ways today. Uh, how could people reach out to you? How can they reach you? Yes. Well, they can reach me by uh, finding me on LinkedIn, Eric. But I also have a website over at leannecalderwood.com where I have blogs that talk about LinkedIn and personal branding as well as the meetings and events industry. And all of my training materials and some freebies can be found over there as well. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you uh, as soon as possible. Thank you, Eric. I've enjoyed our time together. Thank you, Leanne, for sharing your experience and all those great tips with us about LinkedIn. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to connect with me, follow me on LinkedIn or join a Facebook group www.eventbusinessformula.com slash group. And if you enjoy this episode, please share it with your network. Thank you.